Greetings from Podcastville. The Church of What's Happened Now is brought to you by... I had him on yesterday during the fucking podcast. People went nuts. My favorite underwears in the world. Me undies, me undies, me undies. As a podcast fan, you've heard me and every other fucking mook talk on the microphone about these fucking bras, boxes, and briefs for years. But here's the thing. Me undies is the world's softest, most sustainable underpants. It's like having an angel cradle your nuts all day. Every day when you're rocking fucking me undies, there's no sweat. Your balls are fucking nice and clean. They smell good. They design their own underwear for comfort and self-expression. Whether you go for the basic black brief or the unicorn print, you feel like a fucking king. Point is, it's time to cut off your toxic fucking relationship with those yellow fucking underwears. Guys, I know you're hoarding some real fucking skid marks in your drawer and shit like that. But make the adult decision and get yourself on a monthly plan for clean, fresh, soft skivvies. You'll be delighted with the monthly prints they offer for members only, and you'll never have to settle for a pair of that embarrassed fucking shit ever again. Do me a favor. Right now, this is a no-brainer, especially because they have 100% satisfaction guarantee. You get 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and 100% guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash Joey. Again, go to MeUndies.com slash Joey. Kick this motherfucking mule league. Oh shit, it all starts fucking today, right? No more fucking excuses. This is the year of the fucking soldier. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker. Oh shit, it's Thursday morning, cop suckers. Uncle Joey's here with the corona mask on. Fuck it. <laughs> Ain't nobody eating pussy with this mask on. My fucking guest tonight is my nephew from the homeschool podcast. The Agostino motherfucking Zoida. Good to see you, bro. You too, man. How's the family? Man, I'm really thankful. Everybody's really healthy. We good. got our health. How's the podcast going? It's going good. It's going I need good. some fucking tips from you, all right? Okay. First, <laughs> I want to thank you for fucking uh, supporting the comedy store last night. We had a great time. Thank you very much for helping us out. Uh, that's my home. Uh, like I said yesterday on the podcast, I'm Mitzi made. I sent my money in today. We're all straight, but I appreciate you guys uh, supporting us and even giving us a dollar, whatever the fuck you have. Thank you very much. And uh, that's it. What's going on, Diagostino? Man, uh, I'm doing what I can. I'm happy with uh, this time that I have, to be honest with you. You know, I was thinking about it the other day, and I'm like, I bet you're happy you kept your day job. (laughs) (laughs) You're fucking happy you kept your day job. Listen, there's a lot of guys, man, that the thought of not having a day job just petrifies them. Yeah. You know, and you got married and things changed. And you said, you know what? I'm going to keep my little gig. You still do your little spots during the week. They let you travel. Right. So you got the world by the bull, you know? Well, it's like we were saying before we recorded that this is this is a commission business. You know what yeah. I mean? It's just, it's, it's scary. And I w- wasn't at a place where I could rely only on it, you know? And then, like, the, the plan always was is little by little. Like, the more, like, I had dates, the less hours I would work. And then eventually I would make the shift over. And I was getting like to a point where I almost was about to go to part time before all this shit happened. So uh, now I'm thankful I have it. Oh, now you're thankful. So you, you talk about the you know you're homeschooled and shit. Yeah. You know what's going on. You know it's a horror show. Yeah. Uh, I never thought I would be the principal of a school, <laughs> but I am. I'm like the assistant. Everybody's fucking principal. homeschooled right I now. I mean, yeah. This has been uh, a learning experience for me and my wife. You have to learn how to be creative. Uh, between you and I, I think L.A. school district is doing a horrible fucking job. Just horrible. Like, we, we don't know what to do. Uh, camp got canceled for her now. Yeah. And it, this is rough on a child. I don't give a fuck about me. I you think they were doing a horrible job before this and you were going to pull her out anyway? Nah, I didn't. Listen, it's supposed to be the best school in the district. I don't want to say the name, but. We moved into the district so she could go to that school. Okay. And it's turned out it's like fucking, you know, we've settled on, I think we've lowered our standards as Americans. We Mm. really, really have lowered our standards. Things are so shitty that we don't know what's good or what's not good. I know I have a ton of friends with kids, and they tell me about the schools they go to or whatever. And I just hear some fantastic things. I'm not too. This is bullshit. <laughs> this is bullshit. Yeah. You know, she comes on at 11 o'clock. She goes to school from 10 to 1030. And then from 11 to like 1145. 
the first half hour was just kids yelling at each other. Marcus, I got a purple shirt on. <laughs> It gives a fuck, you know. It's a fucking nightmare. Yeah. So, you know, she's a racehorse. She's seven. So you got to treat her like a fucking racehorse. You know, you you fuck around with her and you don't get her exercise, you're going to find yourself in a fucking dilemma at 8 o'clock that's a horror show. She's so, you know, like, like you know, this time she's like, Daddy, after lunch, you want to draw a picture? I'm like, yeah. Dog, while I'm putting the last fork in my mouth, she's right there. <laughs> I turn and her head's right there. I'm like, wow, what the fuck? You know, and I don't, I understand. <laughs> I understand. So, but this has been a learning experience for us. Like, we yeah. didn't know what to do. First of all, if you don't run her before that class comes on, you're going to have a problem. And I told my wife, I go, this is, what, what's going on here? What the fuck is the problem here? This is common sense. When we drop her off at school at, t- at 8 o'clock, she don't go direct to class. Right. They run around for 20 minutes. They let them get their yayas out, burn their energy out. Then they sit down, then they write their journal, then they fucking learn whatever the fuck it is, and you pick them up at 2.30, which is bullshit, too. I went to school till 3.30. You know? <laughs> what the fuck? So now it's like I got to get up early with her. But the online class starts at 11? 10 o'clock for 30 minutes, 25 minutes of language arts. But they're giving you that time to run her first before you go online. Well, what the fuck? School starts at 8. What the fuck are you doing till 10? Yeah. What the fuck is going on here? Yeah. But yeah, why does it start so late? Yeah, fucking 11 o'clock. Why wouldn't so, they start the same exact time? That, I have no Or a half fucking, hour later. I have no fucking idea, and it's driving me crazy. Look at the bags under my eyes. <laughs> it's driving me fucking crazy. Yeah. That they have taken this, like, a fucking joke. Like, I don't take her education as a joke. So now it's like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, I come home at 12, and I got it. Mm-hmm. That's it. People call me up. Hey, you want to do a Zoom? Do I look like I want to fucking do a Zoom? <laughs> I tried to do a video the other day. She came in the fucking video. You saw that at the house. Of fucking, you know, you, you can't do nothing. Oh, I saw that, I think. She's my ghost. Yeah. She's like a shadow. And I love her to death. I love her to death. But it's like, it's <laughs> fucking with her. Yeah. You know, today we bailed out because other kids called her. We set up calls with other kids, FaceTime. And they have messenger, whatever the fuck, and they yell and they scream. But if we don't have that throughout the day, it's a nightmare. You know, because she's talking to you. They have their own language, these little seven-year-olds. <laughs> you know, they have their own pace. They have their own fucking language. You know, she'll tell you a story for 30 minutes if you let her. <laughs> you know, Alana, can I ask you something? Go ahead. Yeah, well, drop it on me. Yeah. So I got a runner in the morning. Then you got a little language dress, and they do math. And then, you know, what do you do from 12 o'clock on? You can't be playing. So I try to color with her. My wife doesn't, you know, I got to give my wife a fucking breather too. Yeah. My wife goes out for a little while, takes a ride. I draw with her. Well, what was it like for you, I guess, you know, because they didn't have any online when you were doing it. It yeah. was all. There was no online for me. For me, they uh, they would mail you all the books and I would get like this big box every couple of months. You get a new box. From who? Um, I had this Catholic program. I think it was called like St. Anthony's, like homeschool education, something like that, right? So they send you a box every couple of months. And I remember getting those boxes, man. You just hear like a knock on the door. UPS guy delivers it. And you saw that big box like you knew like, oh, shit, like we're starting up again, you know? Uh, yeah, no online or anything like that. I th- it's different for me. It's going to be really hard for your daughter. I had a lot of siblings. Right. I got three sisters. Yes. And That's- we tired each other out. And I annoyed the fuck out of them. And you know your your daughter only has you guys. That, like, that's the my big wife difference. is limping. My wife played tag with her. She forgot she was fifty. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're out there playing oh, tag. Man. You know, your dad tried to play badminton with her. He was limping for two days. I, you know, before they said not go to the park. Yeah. I would take it to a corner of like a fucking not none of these parks around here. Yeah. And I played badminton with her until some some motherfucker fucked it up and showed up. But I play badminton with her. I take her against the garage. I throw curves at her. You know, she swings. Right. I mean, you could just do this all day or so long. I get her to hit the mitts and throw kicks and work out for 20 minutes. You know, I don't put that fucking television on because she'll lose her mind. It's not allowed on the house till 5. See, that's something that my parents didn't do. They let us watch TV whenever. No, I got I to gotta cut it. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Watching TV in the daytime is just a bad habit. <laughs> yeah. It's just a bad habit. And I knew it as an 18-year-old. Like mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not the type of guy to stay home, bro. I'm right. not the type of guy. Once you're up, you're up. You got to get out. Yeah. You got to make a living. You got to do something. You got to justify your existence. Yeah. 
And that's how my mother raised me. You got to get up. You got to get out, you know. Now till today, I know if I don't take a shower by 9.30, 9, 9.15, I'm going to go into depression. So it don't matter what I got something to do. I don't have nothing to do. I jump in that fucking shower. What does that mean, depression? Like you'll... you'll... Your mind, listen, bro. Right now, most people's mind, you know, people are having nightmares. Have you read about... I know. Nightmares, okay. People are having nightmares. People are having vivid dreams. Yeah. That means that this information has gotten into you. It's gotten into your psyche. Mm -hmm. I am not mad at you for being scared right now. Yeah. I do. I, I understand every emotion you might have right now as a human being, as an American. I understand every emotion. Maybe you're not scared of it. Maybe you're scared of it. Maybe you respect it. Mm -hmm. I respect it. I don't know what's going on, and I'm not a scientist. Yeah. I know that they're, they're out of caskets. You know, I know that Ventura, my friend, has, they said they're going to lay people off at the hospital. Right. But everywhere else, people are telling you there's bodies everywhere. You know, people today, they had some black guy, they showed his dick by mistake, breathing. <laughs> they shocked him, you know, in hospitals in the Bronx and shit. So you don't know. I know one person who's had it. I heard, uh, Michael Yo had as a comic I heard that. and whatever. Tiffany Haddish had the cough. You know, I've just heard little things, but I, I know one person who died from it, but you never know because if you die from an ingrown toenail now, they're going to say COVID, it's coronavirus. It's COVID to add yes. to the numbers. So, Did you hear that, by the way? There's heard, a bunch of doctors that like came out and said that I've they heard, Yeah. You've heard. You hear so many things that your mind doesn't I know. know what to believe anymore. So. What you I hear so is, many different things. You know what I do at five? I put the TV on and I go in the backyard and hit the bag. That's when the sun is the best. Yeah, at five. And at five, I'm bored to pieces. By <laughs> five, I'm ready to shoot a motherfucker. <laughs> and it's been like that for years at five because we finished karate at five, but kickboxing for her. So for fucking years, it's been boring. I said, you know what? Fuck this morning workout. In the morning, I walk. I come here, I park, I go for a walk around the corner. Mm. I'll walk the fucking, I'll go by my house and walk those little side streets, but I don't like walking by my house. There's too many fucking people. There are a lot of people around. Yeah. There's so, a fuck ton of people out. But here, around the office, there mm -hmm. ain't nobody. You can walk from here to the fucking, to the, uh, the the overduct and back. That's what I've done a couple times. Yeah. There ain't nobody on this side of town because this is where they park for the train. Right. So there ain't nobody There's taking no the other, train no right. more. There's parking spots all over here in the daytime. <laughs> You can't even flatten nobody's fucking tires. So. We just walk around my house like over and over and over again with the dog. It's like all you can do. On the weekend, we went in, uh, we went to Marina Del Rey, and I go, you know what? We'll go for a ride, and if we see that it's not too crowded, we'll go for a walk. You know, around those houses. At least it's fresh air by the water. And I, you won't believe how many people were out. It's crazy on the bikes, biking, hiking, walking in groups, no mask. Cops, too. Cops, I'm like, there's cops. They're not going to let us walk around here without a mask. And they're like, no, cops, no mask, just walking around. I couldn't believe it. It's unbelievable. People out sailing on the water. So when you homeschooled, what time did you crack the book? Uh, my mom was really good about that. Early, like, she started early in the morning. I, I couldn't tell you an exact time, but I'd say, let's say nine. Let's say nine yeah. o'clock in the morning. And then what, what did you do from nine to whatever? What was your day like? You sat at the kitchen table. With my mom, like I said, no computers, no online. So my mom was the teacher. She was there. And she sat there with me at the table the entire time. And she would go subject by subject. You know, you do each 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 day you had a different little project or program or something, just subject by subject. And then, and then I would even get like homework afterward. She'd save a little something for you to work on by yourself. And then after that was over, it was a few hours. Then you can go, I can go watch TV. I'd say I was probably done by like close to four Wow, that's a long day. Yeah. But, you know, uh, I have sisters that are pretty close in age. Like, my, my sister right above me is only two years older than me, and she had it, too. And my mom would have to switch between us and do it. Because we're different grades. We couldn't go at the same time. We were learning different shit. So, uh, yeah, close to, close to, like, four, I'd be done. And then I can go do whatever I want. I remember I used to uh, go watch Power Rangers. That came on, like, at four. That was my shit when I was a little kid, you know. I could watch that. And then uh, it was just TV, dinner, and then I'd have to go do the homework, which was just, uh, you know, the, the leftover project she left me to do by, on my own. And then in the morning, she'd look at my homework that I did, and she'd have to, like, see what I got correct. And you homeschooled from kindergarten all the way to high school? I never went to a school. 
Ever. What, what was the reasoning? My parents are very, um, what's the word, like overprotective. Uh, my oldest, oldest sister went to a public school and she got into some trouble. Uh, she got kicked out of a bunch of schools. She used to get into fights and stuff. And my, my dad was already a paranoid person. And uh, they just pulled, they pulled her out. And then the rest of us were all homeschooled. Very sheltered. Like right now what everybody's going through with this quarantine shit, like that was my life. I didn't go outside. Like we weren't allowed to go out by ourselves unless we had like company by one of our parents or something like that. Like they were very protective. So, like, this is what I grew up on, just staying in the house. And if you wanted to go out and, like, ride a bike, we'd all have to go. Well, this is what's making this a lot easier, <clears throat> that you guys' generations were mm-hmm. raised in the house. <laughs> like, I was talking to a friend of mine, and he goes, if this would have been 1980, we would have all been dead. Yeah. Because our generation did not stay home. We did not stay home. There was no right. reason to be in the house. You got home from school, you did homework. And you went out till 10 o'clock at fucking night. Yeah. You know, and you did a thousand things. Wiffle ball, hockey, football, basketball. Right. Chasing a kid down the block, whatever the fuck it was. Got a paper route. You know, so this generation, these last couple generations, it's easier because they're home. Like, I got to stay on my daughter to go out. Like, I don't want her to have that. Right. So that's why I told my wife, I go, we're out of here at 815. I think that's good. It's listen, man. You, it's not like I didn't go outside. Like I went out, you know. I was I was constantly at my grandmother's house, and my dad, my grandfather had a garden, and you know, Italians are always growing their own vegetables and shit. I did all that shit. Like I grew up in the dirt. You know what I mean? I had a childhood. Uh, I don't want to make it sound like I didn't. And I think that people that don't have a childhood, their immune system today as they're older are are is not as good. Like you see, like all these like twenty year olds in the hospital getting the coronavirus, and it's like, how does that happen? You know what I mean? Like an older person, I get it. A baby, I get it. How is like someone in their twenties getting it? And it's because, like you said, our generation they didn't go outside. These millennials or whatever you want to call them, they grew up on video games, computers. They didn't have a childhood. They didn't go out and get dirty. You know, you have a joke. I swam in the Hudson. You know what I'm saying? Like you have a really strong immune system, probably. And these other kids, they just, they were in the house. They grew up in a bubble, you know, and they're, they're going to catch it easy. It bothers me to know. I can tell when somebody's not going to fucking do it. I Because it's all part of it. You got to get out the hustle. Yeah. You can't do nothing from the house. Nothing happens at the house. Yeah. You know, so if you don't get out, your life is done. Where I come from, there's nothing going on. I got really fr- mad at a friend of mine the other day. I was calling and checking on a couple of buddies and i and and he he goes oh i'm doing okay except that my sleeping patterns are off and he was just like you know i sleep at different hours i don't know what day it is i don't know what time it is and i got a little mad at him because i was just like i I know it's it's common but i'm like you're a comedian bro and i'm like if you normally before this quarantine bullshit if you normally set the alarm for eight you still have to set it i don't care if you're quarantined i'm like you still have to set the alarm for eight get up shower Put your clothes on like, like, you're going out. like you're going out. Even if you're staying in or working from home. Like, you know, I'm not saying, like, don't wear, lay around in your pajamas. Like, pretend like you got a job. But now you're going to go work for yourself 100%. That's why I don't want to, I don't, that's why I would never want an office in my house. Mm. I do certain things in that office, but I get out. Yeah. You don't ever want an office in your house. You, right. You're not productive. You're not going to be productive. Yeah, there's too many distractions. You're not going to be productive. Trust me, I'm telling you. I've done this for 30 fucking years. <laughs> I've seen comics disappear because they're not productive. You cannot be productive in the house. Yeah. You have to get out of the house and you have to make it happen. It's not going to happen for you. You could just send so many emails. Mm-hmm. You got to make calls. You got to get out. You got to, you know. And, and now what, all the coffee shops are closed. Yeah. That's what most people understand. I take my computer and I'll sit in a fucking car. Really? I'll take a notebook and just take it in the car with me and go for a ride. You have to get out mm-hmm. as a human being. I, I feel that, you know, when people tell me, I got depression. Well, because you didn't do dick. You don't do dick. You don't do dick. Yeah. You know, you're frustrated, so it leads to depression. Sorry, Charlie. Yeah. You got to move. You it's, gotta it's, rock. it's sad, but it's and, true. And, and, like, and this is what with my daughter, like, I think it started going into her ear about the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. And she started with that shit. I don't want to go outside. Wow. And I'm like, no, nah, we got to go out. And so I put her on a point system, a star system. So when she gets 20 stars, she gets to stay up till 10. So I, she's up to 10 stars right now. And that's how I work with her. Part what time's the curve for you normally? 8.30. Oh, 
Okay. But I could walk in there at 9.15 and she's still fucking jumping up and down in there. <laughs> I was just going to ask, would she stay up Even my wife comes out and she's like, what the fuck is she doing in there? She reads books and fucking elephants, and, you know. Well, at least she keeps herself entertained for being a single child. She does a good job. She's got Legos. She draws, <laughs> you know. She's got the fucking whatever, but... Uh, I mean, you got to give her credit for that. I, I do give her a lot of credit. Listen, man, I've talked to her off a ledge. It's been tough. It's been tough because she's scared. So I had to get her on scared. You know, she does a podcast every week. Right. She has to prepare it. She has to watch. I, she started watching videos about the podcast. Like like I told her, I go, listen, just because you read about a fucking elephant. I go, why don't you start watching documentaries Learn, like tonight they're watching something mm-hmm. about Australia at 8 o'clock with the, the good looking Hemsworth Liam oh Hemsworth yeah is doing, Chris Hemsworth is doing something on Nat Geo with oh, okay. animals so she's watching that so she'll watch it now I got it coming in and she'll talk about the, the homework assignment but then she'll fucking get off the notebook and just talk to me which is what I wanted her to yeah. do a podcast now she's going well so now she's getting, like, she's getting really, yesterday's podcast was a half hour. 30, what are they normally? 34 minutes, 15, you know, 15, 22, 21. Now she's like, fuck it, give me nine pages. <laughs> so she, we broke up Elephant Part 1, Part 2, you know. So now what did you do in the summer? Did you also homeschool in the summer? Was it year-round or did you have Yeah, it was year-round. There was, there was no, like, scheduling um for us for our family anyway with homeschool like there there were some days where we didn't even do school like my mom would fall off the wheel a little bit you know what i mean like we just like would miss a day and then th- there was no like, i have like a vague reference of what was summer or what wasn't you know i mean i guess a lot of kids do that right you know it's like kind of a vague reference when you're a kid you don't remember a lot but uh i don't i don't know man there, it's summer spring it didn't matter like it didn't matter it was just always work to do i just remember what when you would finish all the p- programs in the box you had a little bit of like a vacation to until the next box came maybe a month so that was that, that was like your summer like you got like a month off until the next box came depending on how quick you went through the first box of uh of, of shit you know i've always worked with her in the summers like this camp like this year there's no camp at the one place but we're waiting here on the other place uh-huh and what i've done is when I was a kid, I think one of the best things that helped me growing up was I had an uh, an aunt in Miami. And when I went to Miami, I would spend four weeks at a shop when I was a kid for the summer. Like, I would stay at home for two weeks, then go to Miami, come back August 15th, and do the last two weeks in New Jersey until September 1st. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I would go to, my mom would go, what are you going to do here? What are you going to do here? You know, play baseball all fucking there, whatever. Go to Miami, go to the ocean. My uncle had a boat. We went out fishing, you know, shit like that. But you had to do shit. Their mother was a professor in Cuba. So she was by the book. So you had to basically get up, play, be in the house at nine. And then me, she had, they had three kids. And when I would come down and make it four. So three of us would sit down and the one daughter would play the piano. And she, the, my aunt would be whipping her and whipping us. <laughs> And then one day a week, we'd have to go to a special teacher's house, a different teacher to get a different point of view. And my mother would send money down for me to go. Oh, wow. And I'll tell you what, all those summers, I excelled the following year when I stopped doing that in the summer. So now in the summers, I work with her, you know, even if it's just like I just threw away the paper. I had her over here the other day and we were doing division. You know, she told me she had a problem with the box. So I'm like, let's fucking figure it out. Yeah. You know, what's for? And then, so I've got her playing with dice. Like, I got <laughs> creative. I had to. I took the <laughs> dice out of Monopoly. Yeah. I taught how to play blackjack, you know, nice. just to learn how to count the cards. Right. You have to be creative. You, you know, can't I don't, hurt. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a teacher. <laughs> but I have common sense. Yeah. And I know how, how I was taught, what I paid attention to. You know, one of the biggest lessons I got growing up was a guy, Earl Kingwell who left me back. He was a teacher who left me back because I fucked up. But he did something that helped me a ton. He made me do oral book reports. I do oral book reports with her now. Right. She gets it right, I give her five bucks. 
Uh-huh. Two stars. You know, I used to give her a friend. Now I give her two stars. <laughs> so she gets two stars for a little book. And I ask her questions about the book. What's this character's name? Where did he live? So her comprehension gets better. Yeah. Because I used to just read and nothing. And then I would read. I could read a book and sit there and go, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> So I was like, oh, I'm the same way. I got to work on my comprehension. That's why I read now because yeah. you got to work on your comprehension. So I don't read long. Yeah. I read short. Okay. Six, seven pages. I put it away to the next day. I have a huge problem with reading where that's what I'll do. I'll, 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 I'll read the same page over and over again because somewhere yeah, along no, the line, no, no, no. my brain just goes it into wanders. something else. Yeah, that's it. No, it makes I'm, me think of something else. I could tell you, but in the first 10 pages, if I'm going to stick with it. <laughs> I know what you mean. I could tell you within the first 10 pages. So <laughs> if I make it past 10 pages, then we're in. Yeah. Then we're in. Yeah, and I was talking to Dean Delray about a book I read. And he told me something. I'm like, holy shit, you're right. I remember reading that, but I forgot about it. <laughs> so it's like my comprehension still slept, you know? Right. And I was been dying to ask you for weeks. Like, what's the deal with this homeschool With the homeschool? <laughs> I've been dying to ask you. I just didn't have the balls to fucking call you. So I said, let's do a podcast on it because I know... There's probably a ton of people homeschooling their kids right, right now. now. The whole country. And they don't know what the fuck to do. Yeah. You know. But at least they, they got the teacher on the Skype, right? Or the Zoom, whatever. Zoom and something else. I mean, it's, at least they have that. Like, when I was a kid, there there wasn't that. Like, your mom was the teacher. And, and then that's got to be tough because I wouldn't listen to my mom at all. Yeah. Like, if my mom told me, Tom, Paul Revere went screaming <laughs> fucking whatever. I'm right. like, fuck you. You don't know about Paul Revere. Like, I wouldn't <laughs> listen to my mom. Uh-huh. And that's why I was thinking. I thought somebody came in for you guys. No. Like, I was thinking of trying to hire somebody to come in after this shit is uh-huh. done with, you know? No. Yeah. Uh I hated school, man. I hated it. And, and uh, you know, I'm sure it was tough for my mom, but a lot of times she would just be like, this is your chapter you're reading today. Read that. And then she'd go over with my sister and do the same thing. And then she'd come back and forth between and us. I get the email right here. So I check the email all week. Okay. And I fucking check it out. All right. So this isn't going to give them good evening. I hope this email attached is the fucking whatever. So what they're basically doing, this ain't going to come up now. God, oh, no, no, it did come up. <laughs> All right, so, you know, Zoom rules. And stay focused, respectful while on Zoom. Have all the daily materials. Do not lean Zoom without permission. Don't change the names on the screen. No <laughs> doodling on the screen. Use the virtual band, hand raise. Sit up straight and make sure we can see your face. Monday, <laughs> lesson point eight nine. Zoom, please have your math lesson ready. And then video, she has to know this video. So then Gigi or Prodigy, 20 minutes. That's like a program. And then then they do extreme math. That's daily. That's a different program. And then she has, at 11 o'clock, she has phonic skills. And that's Monday Zoom meeting. Have your grammar, spelling words, vocabulary, Raz Kids or Epic for 20 minutes, and journal three to five sentences. And then two tomorrow, thank God, tomorrow we got math we got language arts and we got art and you know what she's only got like three math classes left for the year so i'm losing my fucking mind right now that's crazy you went from like you know a big the biggest part of her school was mainly you dropping her off and now it went to like completely your responsibility to make sure that she sits there she has everything ready we have a back room which we were going to do the podcast in but again i didn't want an office at that yeah. I didn't want it because then I won't do it. That means I'm going to walk back there with slippers on. Mm-hmm. I don't want to do that. I want to Plus, you don't want guests coming in your house. Yeah, no. And I didn't want people walking through the backyard, but that was the thing. I know that if I would have done the podcast in my house, I would have been out there with sandals on and shit or flip flops. Yeah. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I want to be on point. So, this, when driving over here, at least lets you fucking know. Right. You know? Yeah. So, they sit in the back together. My wife had a blackboard. We put a fucking fake desk back there. We put chairs. We got a fucking, uh, what do you call that shit for air? AC? AC. Not an AC. No, the other A fan? One. A fog. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't fucking know. A ventilator? Uh, and it keeps it cool back there. And they sit back there and it's nice. And then I go back there about 11 and I sit with her and I watch and I'll write in my journal sometimes. Sometimes I just leave and leave them two alone. I can't work out when in the backyard because uh-huh. I don't want to distract them. So 
or I can't hit the bag, I can't really do nothing. So from 10 to 12, I usually just leave. 10 to 12.30, I usually just leave, go for a walk, maybe run some errands if I have to. You know, if I don't, for me to do something, I have to go early in the morning because I don't want to walk around in somebody else's germs. Yeah. So I avoid routes. I avoid all that shit. I just go to little bodegas and I order food in, you know. Right. But I make her do things throughout the day also. I stay on her. You know, like she tomorrow she has to hit the pads and she gets three points. So exercise is important with the other thing because I want her to stay fresh. And like I said, if I don't wear her out, I'm going to pay for it later. You have to wear her out. Mm -hmm. If not, she has nervous breakdowns and shit. She starts crying. <laughs> so I can't do it. So I work her. You know. Yeah. She goes, bro, I, I get her on at 8.15, bike. And then we go back at 12.30 on a scooter. Then over by the one church, they have a basketball rim by yourself. So I make her play basketball, meet her and her mother. We do drills and shit. You There's know, nobody I, else over there, just you three? Every once in a while, three white dummies with no mask uh, <laughs> show up. And even my daughter goes, let's go. Really? Yeah. Once she sees people she with no mask. She don't trust it. No. She don't want to see people with no mask. On. Man. So she's like, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go. This is so, tough on everybody. I mean, it's tough on the kids and it's tough on the this parents. Is, this is tough. You know, hey, listen, man. It's so funny how I was really scared of that comedy store podcast. Like, I went in there really apprehensive. Why? I didn't want to fail. Okay. I know people are going through a hard time, and I know people were expecting to see something. So I pretty much lost my fucking mind and went off like a fucking animal that I am, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it's just so funny that uh, I didn't really give a fuck because I knew what I was feeling. I didn't want to feel that no more. So if I could take people away from that for one fucking hour, what they're feeling, whether they're broke, you know, you know how many people are dying and you can't even go say goodbye to them? Yeah. And I mean, people are losing relatives, you know. So I wanted to go on. People were expecting something big, and I wanted to go off big. I showed them my balls. <laughs> I yelled out me undies. I shaved my balls. I mean, I went off. I said things that were inappropriate, but I didn't give a fuck because I just wanted to take people's mind off this shit for one hour. I love when, I, bro, this, it's been so weird when something comes on. This time something comes on, and you're still there. Like the Michael Jordan thing came on, and that's great because you're focused. You forget about what's going on. You forget about your job. You forget about everything. You just worry. You know, you're in the moment. Yeah. It's when you scatter that it's bad. So when you watch something that you've already seen, your mind scatters. Like mm -hmm. I can't put the Sopranos on. I can't put Narcos on. It's like walking. I just sit there like a dummy. Yeah. And then nothing happens. So I gotta watch shit that I haven't watched before. To keep you like to keep in, me fresh yeah. and keep my mind. I want to get entertained. Yeah. So if it's something like trains, planes, and automobiles, I watch it for thirty minutes on a respect. Or you do other stuff, and I've already seen it eighty times. Yeah, <laughs> I've already seen it eighty times. So <laughs> that's the problem I'm having. So I'm looking forward to. I still haven't broken down and watched Joe Exotic. Joe yeah, Exotic. I don't yeah. like it that much. What's I don't, Joe I don't, Exotic? I don't like that shit. The Tiger. The tiger. Oh, Tiger King! I haven't seen it either. Okay. I, I just saw too many people watch it, so that, right same here. Like, no offense to, to anybody it. out there, but no, I like, don't give a fuck if they get offended. If you watch that, go fuck yourself. Listen, you like, might as well eat ranch and shoot yourself. While the you're whole at world's it. doing like backflips over it, but yeah, like, listen, I, I understand you all I, say it's I great. Like, what about know. you? If you know me, make things that I want to watch a dude who does meth and he trains tigers. Like, I'm nowhere even remotely interested in this subject. I didn't, bro, I didn't even put it on. My wife won't put it on. I won't, yeah, I don't want to put it on. I just saw too much about it. It was too much. It was too much. Yeah. I mean, we're still relatively new into this. It's only been about a month and a half, two months. At what point do you think people just start normalizing? And it's, it's already not... started. It has, but people are still... It's still what Dude, I drive on that 101 freeway every day. It's coming back. It is? The traffic... People are going out. It's coming back little by little. And you're going to... And people are... This is not even the worst part of it, I don't think. I think that we're, we got it's going to get worse. I think we're going to get, it's called the W effect. That's what happened with the Spanish flu. So like it's called W because it goes like that, like that, like that, like that. So we're going to go back to normal and then everyone's going to be like, yay, we're going to go back to the bars and we're going to drink. And then you're going to get it even, it's going to take out even more people the second time. That's and, why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going out. If you got tickets for Uncle Joey past September. Fucking throw them away. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to Utah. 
September the 4th and 5th. I don't know what's going to happen in Philadelphia. Yeah. And I don't know what's going to happen in Buffalo, but I can't put my family at risk. Yeah. I can't be on a plane for five and a half hours. I just don't want, I have no desire. I, I, I think I would pass out as soon as I put my foot on a plane. You think? I would pass out from anxiety. Wow. I would have a, a, bl- a full blown panic attack. I think I would have a full blown panic attack once the wheels went up and we took off. And I'm wow. petrified. Because if you make a plane come down, you got to pay for that plane. You got to pay like fucking $10,000 or something like that. <laughs> really? Yeah. The, that plane's staying in the air. If, you, if they have to land because of you? Oh, yeah. What if you had like a heart attack? They'll they send you the bill. Fun. Oh, yeah. You'll get a bill eventually. Wow. You know, or if you died on the people plane. People like, well, what, 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 you know, nobody knows anything. Wow. If we have a crystal ball, nobody yeah. knows dick. But who gives a fuck? That's why there's so know? much fear because we don't like, know what don't to know expect. Dick. We don't know nothing. It's and, and, very normal to you have know, fear. I, I, had, I had a weird dream last night that woke me up at five to four. I have and, dreams all night the last couple no, of weeks. No, I've been good the last couple really? of weeks. Really? I just keep seeing it online. Are you having COVID dreams? Huh. And I'm like, what the fuck? I haven't seen that, but that's interesting. COVID I dreams. have. Because fear has to trigger something in you. Yeah. I got on the scale yesterday. I gained like six pounds. Really? I'm not in shock. You know why? <laughs> cortisol. Because what? I'm in fear. I'm oh. releasing cortisol. You know, I have, I've been sticking to my points. I've been sticking to my, I haven't been eating that much. I'm not that hungry. Mm. When you're scared, you're not that fucking hungry. I'm not that <laughs> hungry. And I, you know, it was 420 Monday. Yeah. I, I maybe did four or five bong hits. <laughs> I didn't even eat an edible Monday. I haven't eaten edibles all week. I just tried to give it a break just because that's all I did from March 2nd on. Right. I went heavy. 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 I went heavy till about March 25th. And then I was like, Holy fuck. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? I'm just barely hitting that because I, we were still in Lent until recently. I went into this quarantine thing into Lent and I gave up beer, bread. I gave up all this shit for Lent. So I didn't have anything until like Easter. I finally started drinking. Now I've been having like beer every night. It's probably why I'm having dreams because I have like a beer before I go to bed. <laughs> I'm just barely starting my little my little binge. What do you think was like the most the biggest advantage of being homeschooled over other kids? Did you have friends that went to regular public yeah. schools when you were growing up? I didn't know anybody else was homeschooled. I all my friends were public schooled or private schooled. I had friends that went to Notre Dame over here, and then some of my other friends went to Grant High School. And uh I guess that I think that people thought that I was weird. Like it's very unusual at the time, and um, but I mean I had friends. I, I, I when I got a little older, when I was a teenager, because like I said, when we were really young, I wasn't really allowed to go out alone. But I became a teenager, and uh, when I was a teenager, I started to do the school by myself, and then internet started to come out. And by the time like late high school, there was online Open homeschooling. That door, it's fucking hot, man. Jesus Christ. Oh yeah, it is. Whew. And you wore that hooded sweatshirt. That's why I was like, fuck, it's going to be hot in the podcast tonight. I left. It was so windy out. Yeah, no. It's earthquake weather. Uh-huh. It's fucking windy. It's fucking sunny. It's, you know, <laughs> we're going into 95 tomorrow. I'm going to. I think that there's definitely, I guess, some advantages. I think there's more disadvantages. Like, I wouldn't, if I had the choice, I wouldn't want my kid to be homeschooled. Why? I think that you miss out on social skills you miss out on a lot of things like a lot of friends i only i could probably count on maybe one hand two hands maybe two hands how many friends i had and you know when you go to a school you got a lot of friends you know a lot of people you develop social skills you go to parties you uh you go to dances i didn't have no dance no no homecoming there was no prom you know like i feel like that's a lot of like i don't know special things that kids always remember high school reunions I don't. I don't have that, and I feel like uh, there's a lot to be uh, to miss, miss out on. But I guess there's advantages of it too, because I'm I'm actually proud of the way I was raised. I think that I I didn't not to be a dick, but I don't think I'm as dumb as a lot of kids. Not I don't mean educationally. I mean almost kind of like a street smarts type of thing. You know, like I'm not. I don't fall for shit easy. You know, I think that part partly had to do with the way my father and mother raised me. And uh, there, there's some advantages, 
he'd probably, you know, get into drugs a lot later in life. I mean, I got into it anyway. Well, I mean, but just later. I and I, I was I was not homeschooled, but do you think there's a difference between maybe Joey's daughter's age and then like I feel bad for the the people I feel bad for are like the juniors and seniors in high school right now, who are like you kind of have to get the SATs right, you get yeah, apply to college. When you're missing first grade, hopefully it won't make that much of a, of a difference. No, I don't listen. But who knows how long this is gonna last? Yeah. If if it lasts September, oh. I'm gonna send it to a different school. Mm. She can't be at home all day. Mm. It's gonna kill her. It's gonna come back to bite us in the ass. All this generation, not a lot of people have seen this type of stuff. Yeah. So no one has. This generation is is everybody. Everybody's in shell shock. You know, I don't. I feel bad for a lot of people. I know people are hurting financially. I know people are hurting in so many ways. But you know what, man? I'm hurting. But I make myself laugh every day. I I force myself to do things I don't want to do for the sake of mental health. Uh, I knew that this is going to affect a lot of mental health. And listen, if I didn't take care of it, I'm scared. I tell people all the time. I did a lot of acid as a kid. So I feel like I'm going to snap any day anyway. I'm just waiting for me to shit my pants or throw it at somebody like a <laughs> cop or something one day and they just fucking put me in a mental ward. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know, but I- I've always been scared of that. I've always dealt with fear. I've always had the anxiety. So all together, like, I'm scared of these type of periods. Can I ask you a question, though? So, like, we, like, from two, since 2001, we've pretty much had a war going on const- consistently. And like this, I don't like. Why do you think this is scarier to some people than because they're like not war? shooting you over here? They're shooting you three thousand yeah, miles away. We were at a, we were in war, but it was in Iraq. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, I there's guess. no bombs no, going off here. No. We don't even know about that. Like, yeah, we don't even. We never really listen. It takes somebody. Not too many people are socially conscious. You know, I know there's a war going on, but I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm not in it. Yeah, I know our country's in it. But it's not like I'm following it. I don't yeah. know the rules of it or whatever. If if it get, came closer to home, we know about it. But for years, we've known that there's wars going on at all times around the world. Yeah. Just because you're living here and the sun's out, somebody's having a bad time somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to assume it if you know anything about life. So, I think this is a war right now. I mean, my personal opinion, I think this is a, a bioweapon. I think this is a weapon. I don't think this was an accident. Personally, that's what I think. I mean, they found three different things in it. It's not just COVID-19. COVID is like, it's, it's been around for a while. It's cut with uh, COVID. It's cut with HIV and one other thing. Are you serious? Yeah. That's somebody, that's somebody created that. And the reason that I heard, it doesn't have the effect of HIV, not the same symptoms, but it's cut with HIV so that it spreads faster. It's easy to catch. So like someone planned this. It's huh. like it's pretty. I, I mean, someone. I mean, we know who did it, but I, I don't fuck it. Nobody knows nothing. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Nobody we don't knows know. Nothing. We don't know. Nobody knows nothing, man. It's a, uh, it's a hard time. But fucking, you, you know, you have to push yourself. You have to make yourself laugh. You have to walk. You have to keep yourself fresh because if not, I mean, <clears throat> it's been like I said, it's April twenty third. And I've been home since March 7th, pretty much. I haven't done comedy since March 2nd. So I'm feeling it. I've yeah. gone through changes since this. This is, this is you know, and, I, and it's all understandable, you know. Uh, we just, I just want everybody to, listen, there's whatever going on. I don't know what it is, whether it's a bioweapon or yeah. a flu. I don't know what it is. I do know one thing. I do know that you... Joe Listener has to take care of himself. Your family, you know, be home, not go somewhere you don't belong. You know, if you see a line outside of a place, you don't really want to eat there. You know what I'm saying? You don't really want to eat there. This is not the time to wait on line for anything. But the most important thing about this, even so you're avoiding this COVID, and I understand it, and I appreciate that. But at the same time, you also have to avoid you going crazy. Yeah. And those walls getting slowly in on you. You know, drinking is up 60%. Mm-hmm. Yep. I spoke to my Coke dealer buddy, my ex Coke dealer. <laughs> he says, been, he just called to check in. No, he wanted a, he saw the video for Manscaped. 
Oh yeah. So he wanted the code. He goes, I, I forgot the code. I want to get that mask. In. I got a date. I want to look good. So I, I go, can I ask you a question? How's the business? He goes, Oh my god, this motherfucker's snorting twenty four hours. Yeah. A I go, Are you serious? He goes, Bro, there's people I drop shit off at six in the morning for, and they just lock the door. <laughs> and, I, and they call me again at five, and I drop it off at six in the morning. Uh, there's all types yeah. of shit going on. We have a mutual friend that just texted me a photo <laughs> with, the, with the little hole in the straw oh, yeah. through the mask. And he was doing a line with the mask on and he goes, stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> no, people are drinking. People eating. are smoking. People are eating. People are doing anything that will make them feel better. You know? And with me... I'm just happy to be home. I'm happy to be raising my daughter. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. I honestly thought the second week that something bad was going to happen in my house. Tensions were just a little too high. My wife was tense. I was tense. Mercy was starting to get tense. And one night I had a little... I thought about my past, man. And I just went into places I shouldn't have been. And I... uh came clean with my wife about what was happening with me, you know, because she's like, what are you hiding in your office for? And I told her, I feel like shit. This is what I did as a kid, you know, this is what happened, it's playing with me, and she's like, knock it off. And ever since that night, we've been best friends. There's no drama in my house, there's no stress, it's just, we've accepted it, like, this is what we do. I was really scared in the beginning. I thought, you know, they're talking about domestic violence is going to go up, and mm. People going to kill their wives? I don't know. I'm fucking scared as it is. I mean, I'm sure every, you know, everybody handles things differently. And but I told my wife, people I go, are gonna aren't argue. you lucky we're not drinking? Yeah. Aren't you lucky we're not a couple that drinks? Because right now somebody would have shot someone. <laughs> That's, you know, this. Yeah. if you drink every night with your significant other and you're both going broke right now. Yeah. That's right. a bad idea. And now people start pointing fingers at each other. You should yeah. have kept your job at Lubriderm. <laughs> you shouldn't oh, have been man. such a whore. I told you not to quit that part-time job. So I could totally see that happen to I, some I could see that. I could see that. That this is why you have to stay on top of your mental game right now. Yes. Your mental game. I, bro, I look at my journal. It's garbage. I write a great journal. I write what happened yesterday, how I feel, what I expect from today. What happened 20 years ago today? You got to read my journals now. It's like the same sentence over and over again. I read it like three hours later. I'm like, I'm dog shit. Huh. I am dog shit. So I get it. I get it every angle. The most important thing right now is, yeah, taking care of your immune system, eating zinc, vitamin C, drinking water. Vitamin D kills this shit. Can't last in the sun. Yeah. So vitamin D kills this shit. So get out in that fucking sun every day. Yep. And the other thing you got to work on, number two, is your fitness, that we go fucking stale. Your lungs don't breathe, you know. That's number two. Did you see the email I put from Dr. Belisa? No. That deep breathing helps you for in these type of situations. So as gay as this sounds, everybody, I know people are going to be mad at me for saying this. I end my workout every day. Like I work out like four days a week, you know. Sometimes mm -hmm. I walk. 20 minutes and then I work out 15, 20 minutes. I put the time around with kettlebells or whatever. But my last 10 minutes of working out, honestly, is yoga. Yeah, nothing Downward wrong with that. dog, leg stretches, cat pose, uh, baby pose. And then I actually take my shoes off in the back. I sit in the sun. I do a yoga. Uh, the, the, I do a couple of downward dogs. And I fucking meditate. I put the two fingers like this. Hell yeah. I close my eyes in the sun. And I work on my breathing. I make sure that the, my stomach goes all the way back. Just like Dr. Belisa told me. Yeah. And dog, the first two minutes is a nightmare. You're breathing and you're thinking about negative shit. And comedy gigs. And who hates you. And who's mad at you. And, and it's all bullshit. And after you start breathing like three or four minutes. It's just silence. The only thing I hear is a helicopter or a plane coming over. And I'll sit there in the sun and stop breathing. And I'll sit there in that position. I'll hold it for six or seven minutes. It feels good, right? I get up. I stretch out again. I put my palms out. I get the energy from the sun. Yeah. I thank the sun for being out there. I take my T-shirt off. I take my sweats off right in the kitchen. 
I throw it in the washing machine, I take a fucking shower. That's it. But most of my workout now is basically stretching, working on my breathing, and then meditating. As gay as this sounds. I don't think it's gay at all. As anybody, because I know that it lowers your blood pressure. I know it clears your mind. I know that, you know, and I do the whole thing. I close my eyes. I focus up. I go for the third eye. You know, I work yeah. on my breathing. And then that's eight or nine minutes. I <clears> snap <throat> out of it. You know, I'm not going to do a namaste where you lay on the <laughs> Shavasana. It's good for there. you, man. But I mean, anxiety can kill you, too. Dog, I know for a fact that every time I ate an edible, I had fucking COVID. That was the worst. <laughs> okay? Every time I ate one fucking edible, within an hour, I got COVID and shit. I'm, <laughs> I'm online looking for symptoms and shit, and that's when yeah. I had to stop. Yeah. Because in my mind, I had COVID. You get a headache now. Oh, my God. You got COVID. Yeah. Everything fucking hurts. You got COVID. You know, I That's why you got to take care of yourself. You don't even want to get a cold because they're going to look at you like you got COVID or something. You know what I mean? Like You, you got to take care of yourself. You know, as gay as this sounds, I wear this mask. I got 10 of them. I got like 100 masks. Yeah. I got like 100 regular ones. And then I got like these B-52s, whatever, uh -huh. N-95s. <laughs> I got like 20 of these motherfuckers. And I switch them out. I throw them away. Yeah. You know, if I walk into anywhere, whatever I have on comes off when i go home right into the fucking thing i'm trying really hard but i you knew can't take no chances i knew that the physical and the mental were just as important as the immune part of this yeah i knew it i fucking knew it the whole time i knew for me for me with my fucking skeletons i knew that they would fucking come out and haunt me if i didn't fucking haunt them first so i had to tap on their door and go i'm here bitch what's the problem what do you so what i did this Ooh, in the sixth grade. So what? I yeah. did this in the eighth grade. So what? So I was getting all judgmental about myself and beating myself up. Dog, until last night, until that Comedy Store podcast, mm -hmm. I was quitting comedy. No. I swear to God. <laughs> last night revitalized me like a motherfucker. I needed that so badly last night. I haven't been able to go off. And like I said, every time I eat a fucking edible, bro, I got a different pain. I can't breathe and shit. <laughs> oh, my God. And when I work out, too, when yeah. I go out there at five, the first five minutes, I'm going to die. The sun's hitting me. It's hot. I feel a little pricklies and shit. That yeah. first ball of sweat comes through. It burns my eyeballs because God knows it's coming out of my body. You know, you've been home. <clears throat> so God knows what's coming out of my fucking body. So I just try to sweat it out as much as I can every fucking day. Yeah. And that's all you could do. I prepared for this. I had to. I had to mentally prepare myself for this. I had to write my own obituary. Uh, yeah. About two weeks ago, I go, what's the, the fear about? What am I scared about? I wrote my obituary. I wrote a fucking mask card. You know, beloved son, the whole fucking deal. I don't want no... Yeah, but people don't usually write their own. But you do this. I think MacArthur. Will somebody please tweet me if they read this? Somebody and somebody was going to war and made their troops write their obituary. Wow. To take the fear away. And I remember reading this years ago when I was a kid reading about this. And then it was brought up in a movie. And I was like, that's right. I read wow. that years ago. You write your obituary. That's super interesting. And fuck it. That's it. Now I'm not scared no more. Because you got all that. Right. That I'm, out, I'm done. That worry about your loved ones yeah. and what people are going to think about yeah. you. Uh, you got it out. I write a journal for my daughter. So she knows all the stories so nobody can tell her a fucking lie. Yeah. She knows all the stories. I got pictures that she'll get. I have special pictures in there that nobody's seen before. I have pictures of my other daughter so she knows she has a sister. I write a journal for her. And I write my journal. That's great. And that I just knew for me the mental health aspect. I, I'm just petrified, petrified that I'm going to fucking pull a Martin Lawrence, get a gun, and go to Ventura Boulevard and start shooting up in the fucking air. It's in my blood. Well, I think, I think and it's interesting you said that because I, I even said last night when I called you is you sounded relaxed after the, the podcast. Oh, my God. So like, what do you... You got that there, out. There has to be something that normal people who might not be stand-ups can do that's something like they normally did that would like 
help them feel more normal or something? Because like you did, you sounded like you like you had sex or something after. You sounded very relaxed last night. Last night was a fucking big change in point for me because I didn't want to do it. I thought I was going to fall apart in there, and I just didn't want to do it. And then I was like, how can I not? Like, I wanted to really help the wait staff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's funny. When I went back to New York in May, I had a long talk with myself, and I was looking at these friends of mine that I grew up with that this is way before I did comedy in any movies. You know, anybody could be my friend now. But to be my friend then took a lot when I was a kid. I was a heavy-duty friend. <laughs> you were going to get a call every week about me. <laughs> it, took, it took a strong friend to be my friend. So when I went back in May and I sat across from my friends, I would look at them while they were eating and we'd be talking. i go, this motherfucker robbed three houses with me. Or this motherfucker. You know, I talked to a friend of mine yesterday and I go, do you know that during this fucking whole thing, I realized why you and me got a fight? Me and him have been friends since we were kids. We didn't talk for like 20 years. And he asked me once, he goes, why did we stop talking? And I go, I don't know. Because he was a state wrestler. And he was going to the states. We were, we were juniors in high school. Well, he was a sophomore and I was a junior. And we used to rob this gas station every other month, right? Every other month we'd rob this gas station. We'd beat up <laughs> Freddy. And then we finally beat Freddy. And then we just kept robbing it. We would hit it once a month. And one night, we were getting some coke. Like, I had plans to get some coke. So it was like, just, no, like, when you pick me up, we're going to go with Putnam Field first. Like, that's the way it was. Like, what are we doing tonight? Before we do anything, we got to go put a gun to Putnam Field (laughs) and rob the guy. He's going to have 400 on him. Wow. Because they drop every time they have 400. So the most you're going to get is 380. And the cops ain't going to come to Tunnelly Avenue. It was right next to this place called Snappy Nappy, a hot dog place. <laughs> Keep your tummy happy. Come to Snappy Nappy. <laughs> if a rat meat. I mean, I don't know how many rats I ate in that place. That chili. Oh, my gosh. That chili. One time I see like a rat's tail in it, like in the hot oh. dog. You have no idea. Snappy Nappies till this day. Lee knows. Like, Lee's like, how do you know it's lizard meat? Because I ate it. <laughs> I've seen it before. You understand me? I ate it when I was in the eighth grade. We used to ride our bikes down there. I swear to God, I saw a fucking little mouse tail oh. one time in a hot dog. So why do you keep going? Come on. Because who gives a fuck? It's the same reason why we eat Chinese food. We know they're cooking cats, <laughs> but we still go down there. You know you're eating it. You're like, this tastes like dog. <laughs> this tastes like cock and spaniel. This is, oh, man. This tastes like tears. <laughs> Some little boy's tears. It comes with a wanted poster. <laughs> man, like a, a poster with a kid holding this dog and you're like what the fuck is this shit <laughs> missing dog poster. Uh, yeah missing dog poster <laughs> you know we know when you eat at those places that what you're eating you just make believe like yeah but then one day i stopped like i like veal scallopini i hate lamb i hate goat i hate all that really shit. but veal scallopini done right when they cut it with the razor and it's thin Oh, my God, it's tremendous. I had to stop eating it because yeah. I kept thinking of Bambi. Whatever the fuck, <laughs> those little goats with the, with the fucking Baby thing. Galaxy. Yeah, you know, you have yeah. to stop that shit. So, yeah. the, so what happened was I, I asked Dee to rob Putnam with me. And he's like, dog, I got this big. We can't keep robbing it. And I'm like, you're either going to rob it or you're not doing coke today. And he goes, I won't do coke. I said, fuck it. So I just got a friend like you. I go, you ever rob a gas station? Mm. And the kid's like, I've never done anything before. I go, perfect. <laughs> this is going to work out. And I draw a diagram for him. His name is Louis Castellino on Facebook. If you don't believe him, hit him up on Facebook and go, <laughs> do you still have the diagram? He still has the diagram. Oh, really? He saved it. And he brought it to my show in fucking uh, Fort Lauderdale. Hilarious. Well, two years ago, not this last time when I was in Miami, the time before that, when I was in West Palm Beach or Fort Lauderdale, he goes, do wow. you remember this? He goes, this was the getaway route that you told me. When he goes, I didn't. He goes, I never robbed anything, and you took me down there. And we robbed this guy. <laughs> he goes, I was never so scared in my life. It's like you had done it every day. I would just go in there and put like a fake gun to the guy. <laughs> Give me your money and shit. The guy was fucking. Not again, Joey. But I would take Dee. The guy didn't know who I was. Oh, we had a guy that was on the inside, and then after we burned him. We would rob him, and then we were supposed to split the money with him. And me and Didi bought an eight ball, and we snorted the whole thing. We never came back. So he got fired, so now we had to rob it without no. We were taking a chance every time. 
So that's the reason. So the other night, like the other night, I'm like, why did me and Dee Dee stop talking? And I went into deep, and I'm like, that's right. Louis Castellito brought that letter to the fucking improv about me fucking me giving him the diagram of how we're going to run out of Putnam Fuel. Because we we're, we're not we're going to run to the tunnel. We're going to run the long way, West Side Avenue. We're just going to cross the street. You don't know how many times people robbed that gas station. Oh, man. Everybody <laughs> robbed that gas station. You needed 20 bucks, you robbed that gas station. Like, that's what it became. Wow. So they knew they were getting robbed. And then they started putting two people and three people, so now we couldn't rob them no more. <laughs> but that's the, like, I thought I, for 20 years, I'm like, why didn't me and Dee Dee stop talking? It was because of that gas station. I got pissed <laughs> off at them. I'm like, what do you mean when I robbed them? We robbed this place every Tuesday night. What do you mean? I like how you took the coke away from them like it was dessert. Like, you're not doing coke tonight. Nah, <laughs> we got to rob here. We got no time to fuck around. No robbing, no cocaine. Yeah. Well, we if you don't rob, you don't, don't have money for the coke. If I got a, if I got a different partner, if you don't want to rob, yeah. I gotta get a different partner. How can I cut you in on the coke? I gotta cut him on the coke. <laughs> so how am I gonna cut you in on the coke? He thought he was just gonna fucking quarterback it, armchair quarterback it. And I was gonna give him coke. Fuck you. Everybody yeah. gotta, everybody <laughs> gotta earn their fucking way here. <laughs> everybody gotta fucking earn their fucking way in this fucking game. There yeah. ain't no fucking giveaway program. So it's just it's just crazy where your mind goes on these times. Like I, I start thinking about my mom. Hmm. I started thinking about this fucking girl that fell off a bike when I was a kid. And I got the blame for it, <laughs> you know. Like, like I was, I dated the fucking girl. Me and the girl were like in love, and we broke up. We were friends, and all of a sudden one day she takes my bike. I had the blame for that, you know. So I felt bad about that. Yeah, you know, I just was feeling bad about my life, and that's what happens when my wife goes to bed at nine fifteen, and the doors start closing in on me. So I drink like fucking, like I got these things. Kikomo, these motherfuckers put you out. This is like a, a THC. Oh, Read yeah. how many milligrams, just so the people know. How many day, How many you take? Two or three two, before bed. Two milligrams of THC and three milligrams of CBN. I'll take three of those and a cup of that tea. This company, Kikomo, does a tea. And it's the same thing. The tea is two milligrams. The tea is less. The tea is the same, so I'll do like three of these and that tea because everything in this is for you to sleep. It's like a couple of weeks ago, he fell asleep on Twitch. He was snoring and shit because there's a thing you can drink. It's a liquid <laughs> that's mixed with melatonin, like heavy melatonin, heavy fucking ginger root, everything that puts you to sleep plus 100 milligrams of THC. How long does it take to kick in? Two minutes. Two fucking ah. minutes, dog. Two minutes. You drink so you that can't l- take it here and then drive home. Oh, you can. Oh, I do anything. I'll eat a couple of these now just to Come get on. ready. Yeah. You're going to fall asleep at the wheel. No, I won't fall asleep until I go home. You fell asleep on Twitch? Were people I, watching I you? I fell asleep a couple of times, yeah. <laughs> dog, he fell asleep snoring the whole fucking thing. You watched it? People hit me that night. I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't know what they were saying. I didn't know what they were saying to me. And the next morning, they're like, look at your boy. And it opens up to him, like, <laughs> on a desk, like. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the fucking, as every time he was, <laughs> every time he was snoring, the camera was moving back. <laughs> you could see the camera moving back. And all of a sudden, the camera broke. And he went, and he moved his little arms with, like, a little midget. You know, like, when a little midget puts his arms up, that's what he looked like, a little midget. Oh. And, and he went like this. He went, whew. <laughs> and then he just mumbled some words. I was just about sleep. That's hilarious. And then he started looking at the screen, and people were like, wake up, cocksucker, we're telling Uncle Joey. And he goes, <laughs> and you could see it in his face. He's like, fuck. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh. How many hours did that go on? Oh, no, I didn't fall asleep for hours. I was, oh. I was just, those edibles, That's man. That's great. I, I, I can't do... Like, I fall asleep here. Oh, okay. Like, I fall asleep in this chair. And oh. I have comfortable chairs in my living room. This motherfucker. That's why Ty didn't bring no edibles with me. Because I call him in the morning, like, where's the video? You're not going to believe what happened. It happened once. I fell asleep at four years. in the morning. <laughs> oh, what do you mean you fell asleep? <laughs> I fell asleep with the door open. One night I'm going to come here, his head's going to be chopped off. <laughs> One of these homeless people is going to see this door open and come in here and stop. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Don't jump that fucking fence. These people are crazy in this neighborhood. Yeah. 
Especially now, man. <laughs> Crime is at an all-time high. I heard they're breaking into a lot of cars. Yeah. That's what I, I told you mine, right? I didn't tell you? No. Dude, I went out, and they took the hood. Oh, that's right. The grill off my car. Wait, they took the hood? They took the, stole the hood, the grill, fender liners from, like, the inside, and a couple other, like, they, they took the bolts for the hill. Now, you have a Prius. I sold the Prius. Okay, and then? They did this on a, uh, my, my Jeep. I got a Jeep Cherokee. No shit. Yeah. They and they and they apparently the Jeep Cherokee grills I guess have a aftermarket value, so that's why they steal them. And apparently the bolts that hold down the hood are like twelve dollars a piece, and there's like twenty something bolts. So they steal the bolts and everything because like damn it. they're expensive. So when you woke up that morning, you yeah. thought it was like a fucking April Fool joke. I <laughs> I woke up that morning, I went out to my car like. And I, I was just sitting there, and the gardener was out there, like, mowing by my car. And we, like, made eye contact, and I'm like, good morning. And then I, he's, like, looking at me weird. And then I looked over at my hood, and I'm like, oh, I see what you're looking at me weird about. <laughs> just fucking everything gone, dude. Wow. I just barely got it back. It was in the shop for three weeks. Oh, my God. Everything's, like, working a lot slower now because nobody's really open. The factories so, aren't did they going. they give you a rental car and all that shit? Everything. My insurance paid for everything. That's great. It, there's nothing like... Fucking surprising the fuck out of somebody. Like, <laughs> it's the worst. I used to have a buddy who was crazy. I loved him with all my heart. Rest in peace. <laughs> His name was Darren Rager. And he was a garbage man for a while. Uh huh. So we found out what his root was, right? So me and my buddies <laughs> would go, oh, no. we'll go on his roots. You know those metal garbage cans? Yeah. We would put brick in them. <laughs> we would put blocks in there, an eight inch brick. Yeah, and put like a garbage bag over it, and we'd sit with binoculars and watch him jump off the truck at five in the morning. <laughs> you know, like fucking Johnny Muscles, and he's just picking up garbage cans and emptying them. This is before the machine. Yeah, like, but they had to machine. get out of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is where two idiots they hang on the back to the back, uh huh, and then they look in front of your house and. The best is like in Jersey, they come out and you have a couch, and they're like, "We won't take couches. You give them twenty bucks." They throw the fucking couch in there. They don't give a fuck. Man. Yeah. And it mashes it. But so we would do this guy. <laughs> this guy was a bodybuilder. <laughs> so we get all coked up and we go, let's it's four thirty. What time does Ray go? Take that garbage. He's like, ah, five thirty six. So we would go to a garbage can, fill it up with bricks, and then take the garbage can across the street because we didn't know what side he was gonna be on. Okay. We didn't know what's so he'd jump off the thing. Start fucking <laughs> emptying shit and then get the one garbage can and go to pick it up. And it's like, and he yelled, fuck, because he knew it was us. <laughs> At first, he didn't know. We would do this to him like every week. Just set up garbage cans, just put weights in it, blocks, fucking bottles. And he would come up and you'd see him pull it and he's like, fuck. And then we would ask him questions. He's going like, to break his back. Oh, my God. We would ask him questions. How is work? Ah, some motherfuckers on 76th Street put fucking heavy shit in there. We didn't know. We would sit there and watch him, like, all coked up. And then he figured out it was us. What would you put in there? Like, Bro, weights? We, we drive. Like, let's say we had to drive to fucking Lee's like, on the way there. Well, okay. Like, not by that construction site. Let's steal some fucking blocks and some eight-inch brick. And then we'd go by your house and put barbells in there, like a 45-pound weight. Oh my God. And he'd come and try to, like, he'd be walking down the street, like, whistling Dixie. Yeah. And he'd go to pick up that garbage can. It would be, what, like, 200 fucking pounds. And he would get <laughs> pissed. He'd have to drag it. And then the other guy would have to help him. And then they would empty it, and they'd see the bricks. Oh and they're like, God. motherfuckers. Somebody's <laughs> doing this to us on purpose. We did this for about six months before he caught on. He would come out and he would be pissed. Somebody keeps fucking with me. I'm going to find them and fuck them up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. There's nothing You're like... You're giving people ideas right now. <laughs> there's nothing like... Oh, my God. Dog, when we were kids... Some like, states still do it like that. The other night I was watching... Oh, my God. The worst movie of all time. Uh, the Iceman movie. Oh, yeah. With it's, Michael Shannon? Yeah. It's god awful. I've never seen it. It's god awful. You know, and I know that whole story. But the guy that plays the ice cream man in there, that's what we used to, he used to live on the street called Charles Court. Uh-huh. I mean, and it was the darkest side of the street. There was a street light. So the darkest sides of the street, Charles Court was a circle. It's like, what do you call those? 
cul de sac. A cul de sac. Yeah, yeah. And there's a little island in the middle. Like a and, roundabout? Right, but very small. It was just a regular block with a little island in the middle that had two houses. So when you would go up the corner and you would go this way, there would be lights. But once you got to over here, it was very dark. Huh. And then there was a street light over here. And once you went down about 20 more yards, it was pitch dark. So what we would do is we'd wait till the fall. And we'd get nine blocks. And we built like a brick wall in the middle of the street and put leaves on it. So it looked like it was a bundle of leaves. So you're there with your Mustang and you're like, oh shit, look at these leaves. Ah. <laughs> so what we would do is <laughs> we would do two roadblocks. We would get you in front of Prange's house. And then once you hit the wall and you went out again, we had we had another wall down here. So you would actually hit two walls. You would get out of the car and start yelling, you motherfuckers, <laughs> you dirty sons of bitches, and we'd be fucking howling. Quack, 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 quack. Oh, my God. And that's God. exactly what we'd do. We had a lot of free time as a teenager. We fucking put all these pranks. Oh, no, this was, this was when I was in the eighth grade <laughs> at night. This was eighth grade, seventh grade at night. And then there was a police phone. <laughs> and we ripped that out every night, and the cops would come. How old are you in eighth grade? 12, 13, okay. 14. The crew I hung out with there, that's what we did, pranks. <laughs> that's what we did. There was a lady who had a fish tank, like a bowl in front of a house with fish. And we put lighter fluid in there and light it on fire with the fish. Jesus. <laughs> and she'd come out, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> it looked like one of those zombies at a fucking Chinese bar. <laughs> <laughs> We lit that on fire for like a month and a half until she just took the water out. Oh we killed like a thousand fish. We killed, we killed more fish than cancer. Like the straws, we would put it. <laughs> dog, she used to have those big goldfish in there and then lock the door every yeah. night. And we just put lighter fluid up on top. Oh my God, that's Put a, a match in there <laughs> and you could hear the fish. Oh, that's horrible. Hey, what are you going to do? I was in the eighth grade. Yeah. I was a dumb kid. Oh, I'm sweating. That's what we do. And then we'd run down the block. And there was like a fucking thing. And then there was a guy that did ceramics. And he would sit at his house watching TV and we'd throw rocks at the window. Oh. And then when he'd come out, we'd throw eggs at him. And shit, fuck you, mother. I mean, this was constant. Yeah. That street down there, you knew <laughs> if you didn't tip, like if you like if we shoveled your driveway and you didn't tip, you were done on Halloween. <laughs> you know how many garbage cans we done on fire? <laughs> Today, my wife got out yesterday. Because my daughter, we had to get a bicycle. Not for me, but I'm going to ride it. My wife got like a used, whatever the fuck you call it, like a... Uh, Long bike? No, the other one. It's the beach combers. Oh, like a cruiser? Yeah, my wife said some lady had it for 35 bucks to offer it to her. You know what's funny? School. I bought a used bike yesterday, yeah, too. Yeah, she bought a bike. <laughs> so I, we were tuning it up today. Uh-huh. And I fucking put you know, stuff on the chain. I tightened the things. I tightened the pedals. And she goes, what are you tightening? And I go, the fucking handlebars. Mm -hmm. And she goes, why are you tight? And I told her the story. I go, let me tell you something. One time, I don't know what I did. I bumped into 100 bucks. And the hottest bike when I was a kid was the Apollo Racer. It had handlebars and the fucking thing in the back. What do you call sissy bar? I don't know. You guys are too young for this. Nobody you stood up on it? Yeah, it was yeah. three fucking speeds. It was, see if you see Apollo Racer. And put the picture up of the Agostino. This is the baddest bike in the world. And they gave one away every Sunday on Wonderama. <laughs> when I was a kid, there was a show called Wonderama on Channel 5. And every, it was from 8 to 11. And on Sundays, they would fucking, they would play Wonderama and you could register to win a bicycle. That was a fucking Apollo. Click on to one of them. Music. You see that? I've seen those. That was yeah, an I've Apollo race. You see those handlebars? Yeah. So I bought one of those at Sears, Roebuck. And I actually, the guy goes, do you want it to build it for you? And I go, no, no, no. Just give me 10% off and give me the demo. <laughs> guy looked at me like, what the fuck are you talking about? You're a kid. Nobody asked for 10%. Uh, I'll give him 10% off and I'll buy the demonstrator. Because I didn't have time for him to build it. So the guy goes, okay, I'll give you whatever you want. I gave him the money, cash, and I got on the bicycle. Now, I lived on a hill. Every hill was, I had to go down Sears Hill. And then down the Chinese hill, which is fucking like this. <laughs> Lee saw it steep. and went to the Chinese store. Yeah. Fucking yeah. steep. 
And then my block is a fucking hill. So I went all the way home on hills. Nothing happened. Oh, the hard part is going back uphill. Yeah. I didn't go too many uphills. <laughs> there wasn't too many uphills on that bike. Everyone, but, you know, those hills, that they, they were keeping me alive today. Walking those hills as a kid. There's a, yeah. there's a, there's a Facebook page called the, the Hills of North Bergen. <laughs> it's a group of guys that talk about what we went through growing up in North Bergen on those hills. There was a hill, 46th Street, that was so steep, there was a cemetery on it. And whenever it rained, it would wash the graves. Oh. And there'd be fucking caskets on the bottom of 46th Street. What? Dee Dee, that kid I was talking about, and Carlos, his older brother, their mother lived on that. It was a dead end. You know how many cars came down that thing and crashed against their house when they were growing up? Wow. They would lose control and just crash. It was a fucking huge hill. Shit. Like two miles momentum. Oh, my God. <laughs> and we wow. would walk up that hill backwards, talking with a beer in our hands. <laughs> when we were kids, smoking a joint. It, I just was goofing with my buddies. Like, it would take us uh, two, three hours to walk up that hill now. I'd have a heart attack if I had to walk up that hill now. Yeah. We would walk it three times a night. Wow. You got to walk in the morning to get a bus, back down, and then at night, if you want to go uptown, you got to walk it again. So we just get liquor and walk up the hill, drinking fucking liquor. So whenever it rained in that neighborhood, the Agostino, the fuck, it would wash the graves. I remember first moving there, and people were like, you got to run to 46th Street. There's a guy in a casket. You could see like a skeleton and shit. I was like, what? And then later on, I didn't see it. But later on, when I started hanging out with those two, I asked him if those stories were true. And he goes, all the fucking time. We've seen caskets, bodies, bones, you know, a lot of, because it's an old cemetery. Uh -huh. like people were buried in 1830. Oh, wow. 1890, 19, you know, like the the, the lower half. Yeah. Like it went up as the years went okay. up. So the closer it was to your year, you were up the hill. But all those people on the bottom were in the middle. Well, all like 1990. I remember taking a shit in there one night in the dead of the winter, and I, I felt guilty. I'm like, I'm shit on the grave, and I'm like, this guy's got no relatives left. <laughs> it was like a stick, like with a name, like it was just a stick oh, that there was man. like the cross was crooked, <laughs> like, we... like Jesus had a long arm than the other one, like <laughs> <laughs> like in city slickers when they buried him right yeah. there. It was fucking Damn. crazy. <laughs> so I would take shits in there all the time. I, I couldn't make it home when I was a kid. So I would just, <laughs> In the summertime, I just get three fucking pieces of grass, oh, no. wipe my ass, and walk home with a little dirty ass, oh, but geez. just enough to make it home, and there'd be no skin marks <laughs> on your underwear. You just pull off your pants, and you can smell your ass. Oh, it smells dirty. <laughs> <laughs> so what yeah. happened with the handlebars? So I bring the fucking bike home, Yeah. and next door to me, I had this goofy kid, Valentin Farrell, who will not be my friend. He refuses to be my friend. He's a fucking dentist in Kentucky now, one of those places. I found him online. I just went online and pressed his name, and there he was. So, But he won't accept your request is what you're saying? No, I called his dental office mm. and left a message. I'm like, Tom Coco's on the line. And she's like, he doesn't want to talk to you, sir. Wow. And I'm like, okay. And I fucking thought about it. Why wouldn't he want to talk to him? I'm like, I tortured this kid by mistake. Not really like every time he hung with me, something bad happened <laughs> Not because I was a bad person. I loved him. I loved him. He was a fucking grease monkey. He was great. But he was a speed demon. You know, he was one of those kids that builds ramps. Okay. Like, way. Like, as soon as I moved to Jersey, he was my neighbor. Mm -hmm. And he'd always be building. Him and this kid, Michael Clemens, who had fleas. What do you call that when they have... They have lice? Lice. The whole family had to get crew cuts. Oh. <laughs> so there were two, like, uh, bike junkies. and They lived right next door to each other. So I still, like, there was two incidents, but that one, then we'll get the fuck out of here. And when I bought that Apollo Racer, I came home. But six months before the Apollo Racer, I bought a mini bike. Christmas Eve, the, the lawnmower ones. Yeah. And he fucking fell off and got stitches and shit because the seat wasn't screwed on. So every time he'd see me, he's like, man, that night fucked me up. I ended up at the hospital on Christmas Eve. So he was okay with me. We were friends, and I loved him to death. But he was, every time he'd see me, when I came home with the bike that day, he's like, hey, that's a fucking cool-ass bike, man. Wow. Because he was like a half a bike thief. <laughs> so if we would steal bikes, we'd bring them to him, and he would change them for us. He'd pop the plate off. He would screw, fucking tape it. He'd sand the fucking VIN number down. And oh, And then wow. put another one on it. Yeah. 
Like he was a fucking chief. So if somebody saw you with the bike and said, hey, man, that's my bike. What are you talking about? Mm-hmm. Look at the VIN. This ain't your bike. And the guy would be looking at his number, looking at, oh, it's not my bike. <laughs> Sorry. So we would take a bike. Uh, what's it called when you prime it? You take the old paint off. Yeah. So you put this gray thing on it. It would strip the old paint off down right. to the metal. Then we'd sand it to make it porous. And then we'd paint them. And then we'd paint like two or three coats, and we'd put that other shit on it, the Sylvie stuff. So nobody knows who bikes. I mean, everybody mm. who had a stolen bike brought it to Valentine. So he was considered the neighborhood fucking mechanic. Okay. So I get home one day, and he's like in his window. He's one of those kids that had like the screen window, the window, the <laughs> flea window. Like there was like a storm window. There was yeah. like eight windows. So he would open up all eight of them, <laughs> you know, and pop his head up. What do you got there? Is that an Apollo race? I'm like, yeah. He goes, you mind if I take it for a ride? I'm come down. So he comes down. He's like, man, this is great. Thank you. I always wanted one of these. He goes, God, knock yourself out. Dog, I had no bad malice in my heart. He took the fucking bike up the hill. He even did that thing where you test the wind. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm sitting there, and I don't know what's going on. I, I go, he's a great kid. He's going to be fine. But he's pedaling, and he got up on the bike. And you know when you get up and you're really pedaling? But the guy didn't tighten the screw for the handlebars. So the handlebars basically <laughs> went straight down. He's looking at me like, what the fuck is this? And all I seen him was hit something and his body just fly <laughs> off the bicycle. <laughs> and then his oh. mother took him to the hospital. Oh, man. Oh. And he hadn't talked to you since that time? No. Oh. Then, there was, then we became, we were, we were still friends. And we got older. We had him drinking and smoking dope. He was a great kid. Big kid, tough kid. And one night we started lighting fires in the woods. We were like 13, 14. It had to be 13. We would light fires in the woods. And every night you would show up with something. So you'd show up with a piece of paper to contribute to the fire. Or a piece of wood or a little bit of gasoline, a little bit of liquid. You know, uh, lighter fluid. Yeah, fluid. yeah. Not him. Guess what this motherfucker shows up with? <laughs> An industrial can of Lysol. <laughs> like the big, big, yeah. this is 1970, when they were big and thick. <laughs> and we already had the fire going. The fire was already going. He showed up late. He's like, well, look what I got. We're like, what the fuck is that? What are you going to do, spray it? Because a lot of people would spray that. Yeah, you can make a fire it. mist. But he throws no, the whole can on he there? He threw the whole can oh. in that motherfucker. And we're like, what's going to happen? He's like, I don't know. Oh. Somebody told me it blows up loud or something. And we're standing there, like, yeah, ha, 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 ha. Oh. And just like, boom. And, dog, I don't know what it was. It was like slow motion. I was kind of looking at the, you know how like, when you look at a fire, you get intrigued sometimes? Yeah. I saw the thing explode. And the bottom of the can, you know how it has the opal? Uh-huh. That, that little bump in the thing? Yeah. I saw that thing fly right off. And I, it was like something out of a fucking movie. So this is the bottom of it. Yeah. And it flew off and went. He had jeans on. Dog. Right to him, too. Went right through the fucking jeans. Uh, you could smell the skin. And he's like, ah, uh, ah. And he ran home. We're fucking howling. Oh, no. We're like, this poor bastard. <laughs> and I don't know what happened after that. I don't know what the fuck happened after that. <laughs> Man, one time. Me and my buddy who went to Grand High School over here, we used to ride our bikes around, and we found this apartment. You know, sometimes the the floor apartments, they'll have furnished so they can show people, like, before they rent it. So it's always there furnished. We broke in there one time, and we made a, a murder scene. <laughs> we got, like, we got, like, red paint and made it, like, blood, and we, we put, like, a note, like, like, a murder note and shit. And did they buy it? I mean, Did you see we didn't wait there? around for people. Oh, to... no, that's the whole thing. You got to wait for them to see the cops. You got to make believe like you're just playing in yeah. front of the house. We... And let them show up. And what? Let's get to the bottom of this. I'm yeah. flabbergasted. And then you go over and tell them fake excuse. I saw a Chinese guy with a bat walking down the block at 2 o'clock. A Chinese guy, he's just giving fake information. So we would know we would do it. Yeah. We would wait for the cops to come. And they would go, Did you see anything? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three fucking Jewish guys. I saw everything. A black car. <laughs> Yarmulke. They were Jewish. Yarmulkes. And the guy would go, look, be on the lookout for a Jew. You know, like, fuck. And it was, it was too hard to believe. Like, <laughs> the guy would believe us and shit. <laughs> yeah, Christina, it was a real pleasure seeing you and having you, you on. Uh, I don't want to make you feel bad. Uh, 
I got no dates either. So. <laughs> I, got I do the, got dates. You do? I got a date June twentieth for the time being. Yeah, that's not a date. You think yeah. it's not gonna happen? No. Where is it? <laughs> In uh, Paso Robles. Oh yeah, that'll happen. I meant I thought you meant a different state. No, Paso Robles, California. It's like an hour drive. Listen, man, nobody knows. At a brewery, we'll see if it happens. Nobody knows nothing. Yeah. Nobody knows nothing to the day of. Mm-hmm. You know, I tell you, I'm the type of motherfucker. Like I told you, I, I will pass out on a plane. Yeah. I am petrified that the plane takes off and I go into panic mode and then I gotta get pinned down like that Chinese guy. <laughs> I'm bleeding and shit and I won't have a leg to stand up and I can't let that happen. Yeah. So for right now I'm gonna sit at home for a few weeks. I'll wait till the store opens. I'm not gonna run down there fast sure. either. I'm gonna take my time. I'm gonna hold the fucking man and I gotta really I don't wanna flip out. Not right now. You know? So <laughs> Yeah. But listen, man, anytime you need something, you call. It's great to see you. You too. Say hello Thank to you. your family for me. Uh, what? How many episodes you do a week? Two. Two now. Comes out on Tuesday and Friday. Okay. And uh, I I released an album. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm telling you, with this time off, I got a little bit of stuff done. I had an old album I recorded a couple of years ago. I never released it. I just submitted it for distributing right now, so it'll be out soon. And you guys can follow me on my social media. My website's homeschooledpod.com for all that stuff. And uh, we have fun. We have fun on the podcast. It's good. Thank you very much Thank for coming you. on and explaining the homeschool because I'm fucking confused. <laughs> good Real luck quick with that. here. MeUndies, MeUndies, MeUndies. The best. MeUndies is the world's softest, most sustainable underpants. It's like having a fucking hand holding your fucking nuts all day. <laughs> Every day when you're rocking MeUndies. You understand me? The point is, it's time to cut off your toxic relationship with your fucking old fucking underwear. Make the adult decision and get yourself a little monthly plan for clean, fresh, and soft skivvies. Listen, we got Manscaped. We got MeUndies. I'm getting you ready to get your dick sucked. You don't see what your Uncle Joey's doing for you? That's all I want you to do. That's all I want for any of you people is to have a great time and a great life and to look sharp. There's nothing like pulling your pants off and a girl sees those white little faggy fucking underwears with a little yellow pea stain. How would you feel? Would you suck that dick if you saw a man with a little yellow pea stain on his underwear? That's why you got to put different colors so they don't see the fucking pea stains. Make the adult decision, all right? You'll never have to settle for fucking a pair of tidy whities again. Don't be fucking embarrassed. <coughs> Get me on these delivered straight to your door with free shipping. They, they're designed to be the softest thing you'll ever put on your body thanks to the magic fabric they call Micro Modal. And they come in all shapes, sizes from extra small to 4X. All bodies are welcome. MeUndies doesn't just make undies. They also have loungewear and all the same fun patterns you'll love as the underpants. Listen to me. I've been dealing with MeUndies for seven years. They're the most comfortable underwear out there. They keep my balls in place, and they just feel fucking great. I don't wear no other underwear, so do me a favor. Me on these will not stop till every fucking single family church member gets one. So me on these has a great offer for the church family. You ready? Any first-time purchases, you get 15% off and free shipping. You can't beat that. This is a no-brainer, especially because they have 100% satisfaction guarantee. So do me a favor. I'm going to give you 15% off your first tip, pair. Free shipping and 100% money back guarantee. Satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash Joey. That's MeUndies.com slash Joey. All right? 15% off, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Again, go to MeUndies slash Joey. And I want to thank MeUndies. I want to thank the Agostino Zoida. But most importantly, I want to thank you guys for a great week. Uh, listen, I know it's tough for everybody. We're trying to do our best. And uh, that's all that matters. I love you motherfuckers with all my heart. I will see you guys Monday morning, nice and early. Tip top, Magoo, no drama. One more time, follow the Agostino Zoido. Listen to his podcast, Homeschooled. And that's it, and that's that. I love you motherfuckers. Don't forget about Blue Chew. And don't forget about MeUndies. Lee, kick this motherfucking meal. <laughs>